Hey, Financially Savvy Travelers, welcome to another bonus episode of the Thought Card Podcast. At the time of this recording, it is Tuesday, May 5th, and I am still on lockdown here because of the pandemic. And I've been sharing with you all bonus episodes, episodes that weren't necessarily in the queue, but I wanted to uh, bring these topics to light because I understand that a lot of us have questions. We are dealing with a lot of uncertainty. So for the past two weeks, we've been talking a lot about investing and managing your money. And today I wanted to switch gears a bit and talk about managing your time. Welcome to The Thought Card, a podcast about travel and money, where planning, saving, and creativity leads to affording travel, building wealth, and paying off debt. We are the Financially Savvy Travelers. One of the questions I get asked all of the time is, Danielle, you have a full-time job. How do you, how do you manage the time to create content online? How do you manage the time to have a side hustle? And that is a great, great, great question. Now, before we dive into what has worked for me, I wanted to remind you to listen to episode number 43. It's titled Side Hustling and Earning Outside of Your 9 to 5 with DL Sharon. Now, DL is an amazing business coach, and she's the host of School of Ambition podcast. And in episode number 43, we talked all about why start a service-based business, how she's handled her side hustle to pay off student loan debt, her top time management tips, and how to get more done in a day. But in today's episode, I'm going to share with you my proven ways and methods, how I'm able to have a successful nine to five job and also create content online. A little bit about me, I am a blogger. So I blog over at thoughtcard.com. I also have this podcast and I write books and I actually even also have courses as well. I have a budgeting course out right now. I have a lot of things going on in my life, but I really do believe that it's super important to manage your time. And with that, I've been able to have a nine to five job, be really successful at that, and also still follow my passions to create content. So here are some of the things that I found super helpful for me when it comes to time management, when you want to do something outside of your nine to five. So number one, the night before, I make a short list of the things that I wanna get done in my business. So I make this super, super short and compact because I I really thrive off of quick wins. At the end of the day, I wanna be able to put a check mark or cross things off. So knowing that my time is limited because I have a nine to five job, I'm not gonna put things on this list which are super duper overwhelming and that are super time consuming. But I do want to pick things that are gonna move me forward. So if it's creating content or if it's responding to an email, whatever those tasks are, I make a list the night before for the next day. What are the two to three things that I want to get done that will move me forward? And when I wake up that day and I'm, you know, I have my coffee and I'm ready to go. I actually go back to that list before I check social media or respond to folks. I try my best as possible to tackle that list first. And throughout the day, I'm checking with that list to make sure that I am on track. And I love at the end of the night, I can say, okay, I did two to four things that day. It's a really rewarding feeling. So if you haven't tried that, I definitely recommend the night before, plan out what you want to get done. Also, the night before, I personally, I am like winding down, I'm clear headed, I'm calm, and I'm taking a few minutes to think forward. So I like the night before, it just offers me some clarity. And when I start my next day, I know exactly where I'm going. I don't have to waste time thinking about what to do next. Number two, this is something that I have done a lot before pre-pandemic because, you know, I went to the office. uh, But what I did is I work out at lunch to save time. It's really hard when you work a nine to five and you commute as long as I do. I have a two, about I would say about close to two hour commute, maybe an hour and 50 minutes. So let's say two hours, right? So I would have a two hour commute one way door to door. So Let's say I left the office at five and I got home by 7.15, 7.30. 
I'm exhausted and you want me to hit the gym and to lift weights and then to cook dinner and do all this? Like, that's a lot, right? So what I decided to do instead, and this worked really well for my line of work, is that I would actually work out at lunch and I would do my quick workout, I would shower and everything would be good. And I would say, okay, I, you know, I did my workout, check. If you have a gym membership where they allow you to do classes, like one of the things that I love to do is do spin classes, that is even better. Like I have an instructor there who's pushing me. I sweat a ton. I love to spin, take a shower, hop back on, and I'm back in the office for my, you know, for my time. What that does mean is that I'm eating at my desk at, you know, after lunch, I'm meeting at my desk and I'm continuing on with my work. So that has been really, really helpful for me. Are my workouts super long? No, but they are effective. And I always say that the less time you have, the more creative you become. So working out at lunch has been a way for me to save time. Even now when I can, I do still take a lunch break and I go for a run. And you can do anywhere from two to three miles depending on your pace and still have time to get back in an hour. So I highly recommend to give working out at lunch a try, just a way to save time. And for me, it's also an awesome way to break up the day. I have morning, early afternoon workout get a good sweat in, and then finish off my day. So for me, working out at lunch was a no-brainer. Number three, now this is actually more applicable now that I am working from home more often, is that I actually wake up early to get work done. So right now, again, it's May 5th at the time of this recording, I am working on my third book. And I found that, and I discovered that, In the morning, I am the most creative. So I am able to write, create, and think of ideas. And I'm so fresh and I'm so alert in the morning. So that is the time that I want to devote to my creative project. So that could be writing a blog post or that could mean recording a video or working on my book. So what I do now, knowing that I start the day at 9 a.m., if I wake wake up at 545 I have two and a half, three hours before I actually have to log in to work and start my workday. So you can get so much done. Now, I know that there are a lot of people who have talked about waking up early and I tried that when I was actually like commuting into work and it was so hard. But for some reason right now, I feel and great. I feel so primed to wake up early. So what I try to do now is I try to wake up at 6 a.m. and, you know, get ready, start my day. And I'm sitting by the computer working on my book by 6.30. And I'm able to finish that project by 8.45, take a small little break and start my work day at 9 a.m. So that is one of the ways that I found that has been super helpful. And it actually works for me better when I'm working from home versus when I was commuting to work. My number four tip is managing your calendar. It's so important, at least for me, to have everything that I'm doing on a calendar, especially when it comes to meeting with other people. So one of the things that I do a lot of is collaboration with other co- with other content creators. I'm in a lot of meetings. I'm in a lot of mastermind groups. And if it's not on my calendar, I am going to forget. So I really stick to my calendar. And the night before, I again look at my calendar to see what is it that I have planned for that day? Are there any special events? Are there any, you know, things that I have to collaborate with people or talk to people, prepare for? So that has helped me a lot so that I can manage my time. I highly recommend sticking to your calendar and updating it often so that you can avoid any unpleasant surprises. All right. So again, I am a content creator. So this is framed as a content creator time management, right? Now, my fifth tip is all about creating content. So how I frame it is that, you know, I have a full-time job and I cannot compete with content creators who are full-time. Like they can They can bust out so much more content than I can. However, what is the amount of content that I can create a week that will make me feel, number one, productive, and number two, really good and pushes my brand forward? So what I have come up with for myself is that I try and I aim to produce one new piece of content every single week. Now, because I have 
multiple platforms. That could be a blog post or it could be a podcast episode or now it could be also a YouTube channel. I'm at the thought card on YouTube, so go ahead and check me out. So my goal again is to create one piece of content per week so that I am not overwhelmed. Again, I also think that when it comes to creating content, that's like 20% of your job as a content creator. 80% of your job is actually marketing it, is actually pushing it out there, letting people know about what you are doing and how you can help them and how you can serve them. So I spend more time actually in promotion and marketing and finding creative ways to bring my content out there in the world than I actually do create. But I do create every single week. And my goal is to create at least one piece of content per week. And I've been doing this for the last five years. So I have systems, I have processes, I have checklists that helps me to streamline this process. But again, if you have a full-time job, your time is extremely limited. And think about how much you can produce in a week that makes you feel good and makes you feel comfortable without overwhelming yourself. Because again, outside of the realms of you being a full-time worker, You may have a partner, you may have a spouse, you may have children, you may have other responsibilities. So you have to find a way for you to be able to sustain your business, sustain your creation process without burning yourself out and without sabotaging and ruining your other valuable relationships in your life. So for me, at least, creating one new piece of content a week has been what I've been doing for the last five years. And I feel really good about my content production and how much I'm putting out there in a year. So at the end of the year, if I stick to creating one new piece of content a week, I have 52 pieces of content that I can direct folks to. And as you grow and grow and grow and you're in the game for longer, your archives will just continue to grow for itself. And even let's say if I miss a week or I am not able to push it out exactly on the week date, that's totally okay because I've grown an archive of five years. So I have so much content from just creating one new piece every single every single week. So that is my number five tip. Number six, if you are commuting, use that time. Use that time to create content. Use that time to work on different parts of your side hustle. Now, I would break up my commutes into different types of tasks because in the morning, I might not be running on all, you know, all cylinders. So I would actually manage my social media in the morning on my commute into work. It's easy. It's it's sort of like, you know, mindless or maybe it's not super taxing and I'm able to, let's say, respond to people or create a graphic or do something like that on my commute to work. And that was a great setup for me. Now, in the evening time, I would still be on a buzz from my nine to five. So I may have more creative juice to work on an assignment or work on a blog post or maybe brain dump an idea or sketch out an idea. So I used my commute back home to actually work on creating content or outlining the content creation. So for example, right now, I am talking to you on this podcast and I'm looking at an outline that I created the night before, right? So if I was prepping for this episode on my commute back home, I would be writing down all of these six, seven different tips and boom, here we are now recording the episode. So you don't have to create content all in one sitting. It's okay to break things up. So for me, a lot of times I create by creating an outline first brain dumping second and then fine tuning. So that is actually my, that's how I work. But everyone again is different. And the point of this episode is to really give you lots of different ideas on how to better manage your time. Now, last but not least, if you are a service-based business, let's say you're a freelancer and you have clients, it's super important to plan ahead so that you are meeting their deadlines. When I say meeting, I mean you are actually submitting things in advance of the deadline, okay? So when you are a side hustler and you have clients, you really are in a way dependent on on them, right? You're serving them and you want to put your best foot forward. And it's so easy to get wrapped up in 
uh, other things that you have to do and you could easily miss a deadline. So what's super important if you have clients, let's say you're a freelance writer, is make sure that you are telling your client when you're going to be able to deliver something in the future that is super realistic, okay? And if you can, give yourself a buffer of uh, one or two days so that if for some reason you are in a pinch, you can still bang this out. What you don't want to do is to, you know, disappoint your clients and then lose them and then you don't have this income as a side hustle. So those are what I would highly recommend if you do have clients. Make sure that you're planning ahead and you are meeting uh, all of your deadlines. It's very, very important. All right, guys, as a quick recap, here are again the seven things I recommend to manage your time as a content creator or if you have a side hustle. The night before, make a short list of the things that you want to get done in your business. When I say short list, I mean short list, three to four, three to four actionable things that you can get done in a day. If you can, work out at lunch. This saves you a lot of time and eat at your desk afterwards and get your stuff done at work. Number three, if you can, wake up early and get work done. And, uh, you know, in addition to that, number three, because we talked about like my creative hour, identify when you are most creative. Because if you're a content creator, you will realize the times of the day that you have a spark. For me, it's in the morning, but I have a really good friend her name is Tiffany Hurd um, from Sweet Tiffy's Inspirations Travel Blog. And she tells me all the time that her, you know, her spark comes in late at night, you know, midnight. So I could always hit her up late at night and she will be full of energy and she'll be inspired. So really understand when you are most uh, creative and use that time wisely. So for me, waking up early has worked really, really well when it comes to writing my third book. Number four, be sure to manage and update your calendar often the night before. Make sure to look at your calendar, see what's coming up ahead so that there are little to no surprises. Number five, aim to create one new piece of content a week. If you can go more than that, hey, go for it. If you can't, you know, maybe you actually decrease the frequency instead of one t- once a week creating content. Maybe you say once a month or maybe once every other week. Number six, during your commute, figure out ways to best manage your time. For me, mornings are devoted to social media and evenings were devoted to actually creating content or brainstorming content. Last but certainly not least, plan ahead and plan to meet all deadlines, which means add a day or two buffer and plan ahead so that you always keep your clients happy. That is it for this episode. I hope you found it helpful and I hope it starts to give you an idea of the things that I do to manage my manage my time as a content creator and someone who works a full-time job. And these are things that I've learned through over now five years of doing this. So it does take time for you to figure out what works best for you, but I'm confident that you will definitely get there. All right. Again, if you haven't checked out DL Sharon's episode, check out episode number 43. We talk all about side hustling and earning outside of your nine to five. And I would love to hear from you. Head over to Facebook, Our Facebook group is Financially Savvy Travelers. And let me know which of these tips resonated with you, which of these things that you're going to actually implement. I will talk to you guys in the next episode. Bye.